Hi guys, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Now before I begin, be sure to click subscribe and turn on the notification bell. In 2018, Phoenix realtor John Wake noticed a large number of homes were being snatched up by Zillow. John's friends spoke fearfully about the trend, for it seemed nothing could halt the company's growth. Yet then, it all stopped. So what happened to Zillow's touted iBuying campaign? We'll find out at the end of this video. But first, if you are buying a property as an investment, it's vital that you complete a thorough market analysis. Otherwise, you too stand to lose money. And in today's video, we have the top things you ought to know. Number one, what is a comparative market analysis in real estate? A comparative market analysis is a tool that real estate agents use to estimate the value of a specific property by evaluating similar ones that have sold in the same area. As it can be extremely challenging to reliably estimate the fair market value of a property, it is helpful to complete such an analysis to more accurately determine how much a specific property is worth. Number two, why is it so hard to estimate the fair market value of a property? It is difficult because there are a significant number of factors that go into determining how much a specific property is worth. An improvement's age, condition, features, lot size, as well as the condition of the local and national markets all affect the value of residential real estate. Number three, how is a comparative market analysis prepared? The first step is the rule of three. A real estate agent will find three properties that have recently sold in the area. It is preferable that the sales have occurred within three months, although up to six months is acceptable. The three properties should be similar and located as close together as possible. Once these comps are selected, the agent then determines how they differ from the property in question and adjusts the sales prices of each comp to determine how much it would have cost if it were nearly identical to the subject property. What this means is that the real estate agent needs technical knowledge of the overall market and how various aspects of real estate impact how much a property is worth. The last major component in a market analysis is to look at market conditions. For if a property is in an area that is rapidly appreciating or depreciating, additional adjustments may need to be made on the sales comps. Number four, what's included in a comparative market analysis? Different agents will have different standards. However, the agent should in general look at the following list of components when building their analysis. Location, lot size, square footage, age and condition of the property, number of bedrooms and bathrooms, special features, date of sale, and the terms of financing and sale. These characteristics should be compared between the comp selected and the property in question to determine how to adjust sales data to better represent the projected price that your property may go for. So let's look at an example. I'm not going to do my own comparative market analysis because I am not a real estate agent and I want to keep this example broad. So let's look at a high level description that's on rocketmortgage.com. In this case, we're looking at a single family home that is listed for 450,000. The buyer wants to negotiate, so they ask their agent what a reasonable counteroffer may be. The agent then gathers data on three comparable properties that were sold in the last six months. The agent finds the price for each of the sales and then compares the characteristics between the properties in the comps and the property in question. Based on the differences in characteristics, adjustments are made to the sales price from the comps to come up with a projected price that the comp would have sold for if it had the exact same characteristics of the property in question. Based on this information, the agent tells the buyer that they could come back with a counter offer in the 424,000 to 442,000 range. But now that we've covered the basics of a comparative market analysis, let's return to Zillow's iBuying flop. In 2018, Zillow made a big push to expand into Phoenix's home fix and flip market. Zillow believed that it could leverage its reams of home sales data to automate the market analysis process. 
The idea was to use an algorithm to value and buy properties, which would later be resold after they received light renovations. Over the course of three years, Zillow, along with other iBuyers, grew to over 6% of the home market share by 2021, which is why John Wake and other Phoenix realtors were worried. Every sale executed by Zillow meant a lost commission to one of the city's real estate agents, and Zillow continued to scale at an exponential rate. The company's goal was to buy 5,000 homes a month by 2024, and in the second quarter of 2021, Zillow managed to double the number of homes it purchased over the previous quarter. It seemed nothing could stop the tech giant, yet a month later, it all stopped. So what happened? As you probably guessed, Phoenix's housing market abruptly cooled. Other iBuyers, reading the signs of a coming market correction, lowered their offer prices and slowed down purchases. But not Zillow. In fact, the company not only ramped up its purchases, but continued to pay well above the market median even as home prices dropped. By the third quarter of 2021, it was estimated that 9 out of 10 homes Zillow bought were put up for sale at a lower price than the company bought them. The unpredictability in forecasting home prices far exceeds what we anticipated, said Zillow CEO, and the practice has a high likelihood of putting the whole company at risk. In response, Zillow shuttered its home buying business. Technology, as it turns out, is not a magic bullet. Bots, after all, only do as they are told, and when programmed with smart, conservative parameters, an algorithm can help an investor scale up their business. Yet these same algorithms can also amplify analysis errors, running a business into the ground. As one economist pointed out, there was no problem with the algorithm as long as they stay within the boundaries of the business model and buy cookie-cutter homes that are easier to sell. But there are a lot of things that affect the valuation of homes that even very sophisticated algorithms cannot catch. So what does this mean for those of us who are not the Zillows of the world? At least for the time being, there's no tool that can make important property buying decisions for you. Which ultimately suggests that the old-fashioned comparative market analysis is still an important tool to master. But do you have any stories about your own market analysis process or real estate investing? Let us know in the comments. Did you like this video? You're going to love our Gokche Land Due Diligence program. We'll make you a land due diligence expert in just seven days. Check it out at gokchecapital.com slash glad. And while you're at our website, don't forget to explore our $1 down listings at gokchecapital.com slash listings. Finally, don't hesitate to reach out. You can email, call, or text, and we will respond as soon as possible. So thank you for listening and more to come.